sophistication and want to present an image of style, then the glass in your hand is a perfect way to show your class. With a product of grapes, berries or any other fermented fruit over years, red, white or pink in color, sweet, dry or sparkling, delicate, refreshing and balanced, served in a beautiful glass. A description befitting only for a perfect wine. Today's Seeds of Gold is all about wine. When we talk about wine, it is likely that we all think of grape wine. But did you know that bananas actually give some of the best wine there is on the market? According to the Uganda Bureau of Statistics 2015 abstract report, Western Uganda produced 2.8 metric tons of bananas, making it the largest producer of bananas in Uganda. Farmers from this region have hence used these to their advantage. From Shema District, Western Uganda, Bugarama Banana Wine Farmers Group is made up of about 12 members who have decided to add value to Matoke after realizing there was much produced than could be consumed. Since 2010, this group has given banana farmers an opportunity to find market for their bananas as a raw material for brewing sweet banana wine. Uh, we started making uh, wine from bananas which were brought by, by members. By then, our starting was very small. We started by making uh, about five jerkins uh, in the first instance. And we made another five. The first one we made in January. Then the second, the second batch of, of another five was made in June. So in the whole year of 2010, we made only 10 jerkins. Then in the ensuing years, the number, the production kept on increasing up to about 60 as we have of now. I would wish to mention a few of the opportunities that have kept us running. Uh, one of them is uh, plenty of bananas around. Another one, our personnel was well trained, and we make good quality wine. Joe Sagaba is 25 years old. He's a graduate in computer engineering from Barara University of Science and Technology. Currently, he's working as the group's quality controller for winemaking. I will take you through the whole process. So, we use uh, edible bananas, and uh, one of the first things we do, we first make sure that the matoke are mature enough. So once we get mature matoke, uh, we usually make, we usually get many. So what we do when it's a mature one like this one, we first slice it like this. So after slicing it like this, we we feel like it's ready to be to be kept until it gets uh, until it ripens. So after it has been sliced like this, we put it uh, above the the cooking press, which in Lunyankolia we call it obugamba. So up here we are having it so that it gets. Uh, ripe very quickly in approximately seven days after getting it it should be ready we and uh, that uh, the, why we put it above the cooking press because uh, we the smoke helps to ripen things very quickly the, the bananas specifically then more so it helps to, the, to bring in the aroma that is wanted in the wine. Uh, it, it, the aroma is very natural. We don't put, add in anything else, but it's what we basically need. Uh, and it's a reason why we put it under the fire press. Bananas in Uganda come in different varieties and each of these have a specific role. Roasting bananas. These are mainly eaten when cooked or roasted and the main variety is the gonja. Dessert bananas, 
These are mainly eaten as dessert and the main types include bogoya, skalindizi or apple bananas. Brewing bananas, these are mainly grown for juice or fermented to produce a local brew called tonto. These include mbidde, musa and others. The matoke, these are majorly cooked and eaten as a staple food item. They include ntalagaza, mpologoma, mbwazirume and these are the best for processing the sweet wine. Quality is a very important factor for wine. Before processing, the bananas must be carefully identified and selected. They are then left to fully ripen to a yellow color, peeled and efficiently weighed for the right measurements. Bananas are then added to boiling water to a certain temperature. It is then kept in a drum for one week for the first fermentation stage. When uh the matoki are ready, uh, we, bring out, we bring them out here at the, what we call a peeling place and uh, we ensure utmost cleanliness so that uh, the wine does not get damaged. Uh, any contamination of wine, of this wine starting from the first step, it can lead to a serious loss. We emphasize all our workers to always put on uh, protective measures, one being headgears, the aprons, and so on, so that we avoid the unnecessary contamination. While we are getting matoke, we first ensure that they are mature enough, they are of good quality, and uh, they are not infected with banana bacterial wilt disease. So why we do the ripening ourselves, we, it is very hard for someone to tell um, an infected matoke when it's already ripened. So the reason we are doing weighing right now, it is recommended that in every two kilograms of in every one kilogram of, uh, of bananas, peeled bananas, you put in two liters of water. In each and everything we will be using, let it be for weighing uh, the bananas, we use a calibrated weighing scale by the UNBS. After putting in the bananas, we have to wait until they boil up to 85 degrees. We shall use our digital thermometer. It's what we use while we are measuring that. So we shall cover them for a few minutes. We shall be checking when it starts making foam. Then we keep on checking. You find it can start at 70 or 60, 68 there. So after 68, you give it like five minutes, you check. You make sure that it doesn't go up to 100 because at 100, the matoke is so much boiled or cooked, it might be in two small particles, which is also tiresome on extracting the juice. After getting our juice, uh, from there, we shall leave this juice for first seven days, that is a week, without putting on an airlock, something like this. So for uh, something like this. In this, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this stage, it is called the first active fermentation stage, whereby uh, uh, tomorrow we shall put in, we shall put in uh, the the ingredients that uh, have specific temperatures that you have to put them on, which is the recommended is 25. So from there, we after first the first five days, the first seven days, we put the a, a breather, which is called an airlock, allow saturation of air that is carbon dioxide moving out, 
and the oxygen coming in and from then then we tightly close around and leave it for six months for each and each and every batch we make we make sure that at least we put that date the date on which it was made as you can see on the drums around each and every drum has that that date to keep track of when the wine was made uh, uh, how long and how long it has stayed and to know which wine is more mature so that we serve our customers with the wine that is oldest here are some of the ingredients added to make a good wine potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite calcium carbonate sulfur dioxide sugar and yeast You may have come across a number of videos on banana winemaking from the internet and it all may have seemed like a walk in the park. Alas! To call it wine, it goes through a series of steps and monitoring and these include proper hygiene, a dedicated supplier of ingredients and equipment, a well-trained quality controller, a good market and so much patience. Good wine takes from 3 to 10 years to be put on the market. So. After the, the first six months of fermentation, we go to another stage where we, which we call maturity stage. In maturity stage, we do a series of filtration with the, which helps to remove the, the stuck to wine. In wine, when you leave it over here for some time, it stagnates and it's some of the segments go down while allowing the clear wine to be up. So as it is a, on, in this stage, we do several filtration up to, as we, tag, as we leave the wine to, to mature more. And uh, as I had said, we keep the track of, uh, of the date so that we know which wine is mature as of now. Uh, as of now, the most mature is uh, approximate is of April, April, May, and uh, we have some Feb of last year, we have some March of last year. So before we do the final filtration, which I'm about, um, just about to show you, we do racking. And uh, in racking, we, we, you first have to leave the, uh, before you do the filtration, you leave the wine to be racked, then you leave it for four days. After racking, the wine is then taken through a three-stage filtration process. This is done days apart. We are using uh, filter pad number one. This one is like the, the first one uh, and it allows the even the, 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 it is the coarse wine that passed through. It has uh, th two sides. This one is a little bit smooth. This one is coarse. So you make sure that the coarse side faces this side and, uh, of the pump. You make sure that all the pipes have been thoroughly cleaned and uh, you can add them to the filter. We expect when we switch on the first wine that goes through, it brings out the water, as you can see, that has been in the, that was retained in the pads. So you have to wait until you get a clear thing of what you think is wine. Even the, the first wine that comes is mostly, at first, is diluted. 
So you wait then when this one is ready you can put in and now your filtration can go on. So this is our first stage of as you're getting ready. After that, uh, you use another filter pad. It is, there is supposed to be number two. I don't, we, I think they are out of stock. Right now we are having number three. Number one is blue, number two is red, number three is green. After using number three, you're, you get, you're supposed to get clear wine and it's not supposed to segment afterwards, even after bottling, even if you keep it there. With the lack of proper technology support for many farmers, quality for both local and international markets is compromised. Nonetheless, this group is using what is available with the hope of producing the best wine product on the market. As of now, this is the improvisation we use for parking. We get a funnel, we fold a cloth around it, so that's in case there is any, let's say that they are, wine is usually attracted by, usually attracts the insects in Lunyankore, we call them tissue and jera. So we, in case of anything, in case it is attracted, it shouldn't go in the wine bottle because that would be very bad for, for us, plus even our customers. Then after that, we make sure that our stopper that we use is in, a, in very hot water so that even the, the kajam that got maybe on the stopper is dead before we cover the bottle. And as you've seen, we, this, is, it, it, this takes uh, a little bit longer in case uh, you have an order, let's say, of 1,000 bottles. It will require you almost a whole day to do, to do this. Uganda was recently ranked second largest alcohol consumer in Africa according to a US-based Mogoldom media group. However, only 2% is accounted for wine consumption. This poses a challenge to the wine market in Uganda, let alone banana wine. I would say there is a market for our product, the super wine. But there are a few things that hinder the speed of marketing. One of them, wine is still a new drink. So it is not everyone who can afford a bottle of 10,000. It is selective. That is one of the marketing problems. Uh, another one, we don't have transport. So we have to move on, on border border, at times on foot, we can take some, but we haven't been able to access distant markets just because of transport. So our marketing is limited to nearby areas. We haven't been able to go very far. On, uh, on uh, pricing of our product, uh, in, in relation to our parks, we, we pack this size of 330 meters and this is on retail costs 5,000. And for those on wholesale, we reduce just a bit. Uh, our second pack, this bottle of 750 meters, that one is 10,000. We also reduce uh, on wholesale. Then we pack uh, three liters, which costs uh, 20,500. 20, 20, then we have another pack of five liters at 35. Uh, we have a pack of 10, 10 liters at 65. Uh, another pack is of 20 liters at 130. Wine is an alcoholic beverage and should not be consumed by people under the age of 18. However, winemaking is advised as value addition for farmers who wish to add value to their banana production. For those who have not been engaged in, in winemaking, not necessarily in Bugarama Super Banana Wine Producers, 
But I would advise each and every person, more especially those who get this message, to get engaged in very addition on agricultural products. Things will locally grow. Things will locally yield in order to increase their household incomes. For us, we have seen a difference from selling a bunch of banana and making wine and sell wine from a bunch. Uh, on this tone, I would like to inform everybody listening that out of only one bunch, we get a jerkin of wine. And from the jerkin, we get a, about 20, between 28 and 29 bottles. And each bottle is 10,000. That would be 290. Uh, we can't call it that our money. We have to reduct the, the related expenses, the cost of the bottles, the cost of the ingredients, the cost of uh, labor and whatever. And according to us, about 200,000 remain. So I would give advice to each and everybody listening to me to get engaged in value addition for increased incomes. As the saying goes, you reap where you sow. For Agaba, he has no regret working in the production field on the farm and would wish the same for any young person just like him. Um, I'm 25 years old and uh, as of now, I have uh, finished my bachelor's in uh, computer engineering, courtesy of this project. If it wasn't there, I think I would have gotten stuck somewhere. So this goes to the youth. It is just uh, basically an encouragement, like we don't need to get involved in gambling to earn money or anything that, that leads to quick money. We can uh, get involved in such projects that, that can earn money, much as the, uh, it takes a little bit more time, but at least when you get that money it is worth it and you use it knowing it's your sweat, not just getting quick money. And by the way, when you get quick money, the, the way you get it is the way it disappears. So I basically encourage the youth to get involved in work, let uh, them start up enterprises that can help them get money, let them get involved in farming, let get them get involved in uh, very addition projects.